Hello everyone and welcome. Um, this is going to be a painting series with the aim of getting people off their computers and doing something creative as much as you can. Um, in the meantime I'm just going to really quickly show you what I've been working on the past few weeks in this book which I've pledged to fill up as much as I can during quarantine. Um, but to start I mainly wanted to do this because I know that online lessons are quite hard, they're quite intense on computers and I think it's really important, especially as a way of relaxing, to try and be creative with something and make something. Whether you like painting or crafting or collaging, whatever it is, please just give it a go. I'm not expecting anyone to be good. So my aim is that these series will be a mixture of tips, inspiration, so like what I've done, maybe hopefully that will inspire you. Um, and also tutorials of doing things. Maybe if you're really stuck and you don't know how to do something, um, hopefully I'll be able to show and do my best. But honestly, I'm really welcoming any feedback or any ideas that people have. Please just email me and get in touch. I'm really interested to see what you want to do. This here is a monk painting that I saw another girl do online and I really wanted to recreate it. Recreating t photos is totally okay. I want it to look like this in the end, but it's taking a while. Today I'm enthusing that everyone goes and gets out all of their art materials and everything they can find in their cupboards. And I'm going to explain what each material does and why it's good and bad. First, we have watercolours. These are really common. They come in pans like these. They're activated by water so they can be lifted and blended and they're best layered on top of each other. I'd say the paintings that these make tend to be a bit looser. They capture moods like a sunny photo and they're really good for beginners. Next we have acrylics. These are my favourite, they're what I use. Um, they blend with each other when they're wet and they layer really well. They've got really strong vibrant colours and they're quite soft and creamy. Um, they're not water-based though so you can't blend them into each other but I'd really recommend these. They take a bit of getting used to but they're brilliant. Next we have gouache. These are a mix of watercolour and acrylics. They're water-based so like watercolour they blend but they also have the colour vibrancy of acrylics. They're not as good for layering and I find that they can be a bit complicated plus they're quite uncommon so I doubt that you'd have them in your home but they make really really gorgeous photos. If you don't have colour pencils in your home I think you're living under a rock. These are brilliant for beginners, they're such a staple. I'd say if you can make sure that the colours are bright enough that they can layer on top of each other. Black and white pencils including graphite and charcoal pencils are really good. They have different hardnesses or softnesses to give you a darker line and also here you see charcoal is really really blendable. You can also use black paper and use white on them. I personally think that pencils are really good for doing detailed photos, maybe anatomy, it really depends. Next we have fine liners or small black pens. These are really good for doing outlines, they often come in different thicknesses. They're very good at simplistic drawings or for mixed media and they can often come across with a really strong and powerful impression. Now I know that colour markers are an absolute staple, um, they're so loud, so vibrant. Mine are actually water blendable but you don't have to have them, any pens will do. They're really, really good for making loud drawings. These are a bit more unusual. They're pastels, they're little sticks and they're really blendable. They are great for making very loose drawings. Now I'm talking about mixed media things that you can have. Coloured paper, black and white paper, old paper, newspaper, patterned paper, tissue paper. These make really cool collages and if this is something that maybe you're not quite so arty, it's a brilliant idea for you to do. Other materials like wire, beads and clay also are really good at making me creative and doing stuff. So I definitely recommend seeing if you've got any of these in your cupboards. I think that's going to conclude the first video. I want to keep each of them around five minutes long. It's quite wet and rainy now, so um, yeah, go and find all your art supplies and get drawing and painting and we'll do the same thing next week and hopefully I'll come up with some other things to do.